Where are you supposed to put your thumb on the French bow anyway? What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and we're taking a look today at the French bow and where you're supposed to put or can put your thumb on the bow. I realize there are a lot of German bow players out there, and I will get into that in future videos, but we're gonna just start with the French bow, which I think is a bit more of a challenge in terms of where the thumb goes. I see all sorts of things when people start out. I see a lot of flat thumbs right on the side. I see a lot of people trying to put the thumb in this little, spot right here and I see all sorts of tension creeping into French bow hands from the get-go. It's concerning and it's a bit of a challenge to figure out how to do this. By the way, I've done a whole video on this called How to Bow Double Bass. I will link up to that up here. But right now we're talking more specifically about just where this apparatus, this right hand goes. My first recommendation for people starting out is to do what we call the early bow hold. And I try to not use the word grip. It does slip out from time to time, so apologies if I do. But even the word grip, it sort of conjures up this image of holding on for dear life, which is not a super helpful mindset for the bow. So so the early bow hold is one in which the four fingers look pretty much like they do in most French bow holds, which for me at least is there's this lapping right here, this metal winding. My first finger goes right there. You can actually see that it's worn away on <laughs> my bow a little bit from where the first finger sits. The second and third fingers kind of chill out right about here in the bow. My second finger generally rests on the ferrule, this metal part right here. Third finger's hanging out right next to it. And the fourth finger is usually hovering around the dot on the bow right there. So something like that. Now for the early bow hold, the thumb goes right against the ferrule, this metal part right here. And the second finger and thumb, they pretty much touch right over here. I find this to be very comfortable. The bow sits in the second knuckles for my middle two fingers. First finger, it sits in the first knuckle. Pinky, it sits kind of between the first and second knuckles. And these are not hard and fast rules. I like to think about there being a no bow hold, bow hold, can you say that three times? Uh, what that means is things shift a bit as you're on different strings and playing different passages and maybe you're bouncing, or maybe you're not, and all those sort of things. But as a general rule of thumb, I like this as a way to start out. Now where the thumb traditionally goes, and this would be the next step for people after they get comfortable with that early bow hold, and some people just jump right into this, that's cool too, so everybody has a different way of doing this, but the spot is traditionally where the frog meets the wood, and then where this leather grip, I don't like the word grip, but I, I think that's usually what we call this, or leather wrap uh, meets. There's this little spot where the wood is showing between the frog and between this leather. And the tip of the thumb sits right there. And this can be a bit challenging <laughs> to get comfortable with. Now, one thing I recommend is starting off building your bow hand by pointing the bow up at the ceiling. I do not recommend holding the bow out like this when you're figuring all this stuff out because it is an unnatural thing. You're never, as I do it, <laughs> you're never holding the bow in the air unsupported. If you do want to do that, take your left hand and support the tip right there. And that's a good way to do it. But I prefer to just practice pointing the bow at the ceiling. You can also make circles on the ceiling. You can go back and forth. There are all sorts of bow games that you can do, but you just want to get comfortable having this thumb here at this corner. Now, for many people, it feels like it's a little slippery. Your thumb could slip back and forth. Sometimes taking a little bit of rosin and putting it on the end of your thumb can help with that. And then the other thing that lots of people use, I will be right back, is this sort of tubing, this latex tubing right here. And you can buy this online. You can just go into any sort of supply store and buy latex tubing. It's a bit of a challenge to get this onto the stick. I found you have to take the frog off, but once you get it there, it makes it so much more comfortable for many people. I've done a whole video on this, which I will link up to right here. If you find yourself struggling with this traditional thumb placement, well, first of all, I'd say give it some time because it is a bit weird. That's one thing that I think German bow has a real advantage over in terms of French. I find that it's just more comfortable for a lot of people. It has some disadvantages too, just like everything in life. But 
this spot, af after you get used to it, you will find oftentimes that th you just get used to the, the feeling of it. Also, many, many people start to straighten their thumb or even bend their thumb backwards right here. I would encourage you to avoid that, although people play instruments in all sorts of different ways. I find that having a nice, rounded thumb is the best approach for most people and anything that's flat or tight or convex here tends to radiate and anything that's tense here in the thumb area that tends to radiate up the arm and into the back and cause all sorts of issues. If you are struggling, however, or if you just want to try something different, there is what's called the Italian bow hold. And I will link up to a video. I'm linking up to lots of videos today, but I'll link up to a video here from Gabriele Raggianti that he did in partnership with D'Addario Orchestral. He holds the bow this way, and I used to hold the bow this way, and it's a super cool way to hold the bow. Essentially, you take the thumb and you put it in this little round spot on the frog. It's just an alternate spot, and I find that to be fairly comfortable. And yeah, give it a shot and see, I played this way for years, and then I've gone back to the traditional spot. I find that it's just a little more flexible for me, but I do find that I feel that there's a little bit more power back here. Also, my bow is a little bit heavy, and so holding it back here, it felt like it was a little bit too tip heavy. So different strokes for different folks, but that's just what I've found. That's a look inside where you put the thumb or where I put my thumb. If you want to learn more about bowing the double bass, check out this video we've got linked up here. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next video.